Hey, Weed North, Mr. Eagle here. Let's talk about ice tables. An ice table is a way to keep track of what's happening uh, with initial concentrations and then how that's changing. We, we use uh, algebra to kind of figure this out. And then what's our concentration at equilibrium? Okay, so it kind of looks something like this, where let's say we have a reactant going to a product. And I threw in these, these numbers, 2 and 1, just so we have some stoic ratios to work with. Usually, you're going to start with some amount of reactant and often zero product. Now, in order to go from initial conditions to equilibrium, we're going to have to change our concentrations to some degree, but we don't exactly know how much that's going to be. So we'll just put in x, and then if we're changing it by an amount of x, then that means we're going to end up with x if we started at zero, right? If we're increasing our products, in this case, by x, then that means we're decreasing our reactants by 2x because there's a 2 in our balanced, equa in, in our balanced equation. And so our, our equilibrium concentration of our reactant in this case would be 5 minus the 2x. So that's kind of the general format that we're going to follow. All right, here's uh, a few kind of side notes to add to this. The KEQ is going to be equal to our products over reactants, like always, uh, and that's at equilibrium. And so we, that's what the E row represents, right? So you can often set your, your K value that you're either given, or if we're trying to find our K value, then we set it equal to our equilibrium concentrations. All numbers are assumed to be molarities. They're all concentrations. Uh, a lot of times we'll fill these in with no units, um, just kind of keep things uh, quick and clean. But just remember that we're dealing with molarities here, concentrations, not, uh, not moles, or, and especially not grams. The C row has to line up with the stoic ratios. Okay, that's why I threw this 2 in there, just to kind of show that as an example. If you don't start out with any zero quantities, then you can't just assume that we're going to make more product in order to get to equilibrium. It might be the case that we're starting with a lot of product and only a little bit of reactants, and we're shifting actually going left in order to reach equilibrium. So if you're starting with concentrations in ev with every species in the, in the reaction, then we first have to figure out Q and compare that to K in order to know which way it's going to shift at equilibrium. Because otherwise you wouldn't know if, we're, if we should do plus 2x here or minus 2x if you don't know which way it's going to go. All right, so let's just look at a few examples. Here's a balanced equation, and we're given some initial conditions. We have a one liter flask containing this many moles. Because it's in one liter, then this is essentially our molarity, right? After the system reaches equilibrium, we discover that we have a certain amount of oxygen in our flask. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations uh, of every species and the value of K. Let's start by setting up an ice table. Write out your uh, balanced equation, set up your initial change in equilibrium, and then plug in what, we, what we're given. We're starting with 0.298 moles of our reactant, and we're assuming zero product. It doesn't say that we have any product. It only says that we have uh, a reactant, so we can assume that products are zero. Now we're also given something else. We're given the concentration at equilibrium, and this is super helpful. If you're given this, then you know how much it changed by, right? Our oxygen concentration must be increasing by 0 0.002. If oxygen is increasing by that much, then our concentration of our sulfur dioxide must be increasing by twice that much, right? Because the balanced equation says, to, it says that the ratio is 2 to 1. And so take that times 2. You can go ahead and add that down. And, and so we end up with 0 0.004 moles of sulfur dioxide. Again, this isn't moles. This is concentration. We happen to be in a 1 liter flask, so it works out that they're the same in this case. Now, if this is how we're, much we're increasing our products, then we're decreasing our, our reactants by that same quantity. Uh, this is a 2 to 2 ratio, and so I just kind of took a shortcut and wrote it as 0 0.004. Go ahead and subtract down, and this is how much sulfur trioxide we have at equilibrium. Now, it says to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of all the species. We just did that, right? These are your equilibrium concentrations. Now that you have equilibrium, now you can find K. Here's our K expression. Remember to square these two because we have twos in our balanced, in our balanced equation. And then you, go, you can go ahead and just plug in the numbers and solve. And this one's pretty straightforward. A couple more tips on using ice tables. We'll use this as a general example. Go ahead and pause the video and, and get all this written down, and then you can kind of track with me as I'm kind of talking through it. All right, now that you have this all written down, think about this. It makes a lot of sense. If your K value is really small, that means your amount of products has to also be really small. In which case, if your ice table looks something like this, X can be possibly be so small that it can be negligible meaning we can basically ignore it in this subtraction. Don't ignore it in, in here because it's by itself and then you would have zero product. It's not true that you have zero product. You just have a very, very small product. If 
your k value is really small, right? But it might be so small that it, it basically doesn't change the concentration of your reactants, right? If we can ignore this minus 2x, if it's like a rounding error, like it's not even within the significant digits of what we're starting with on our concentration, then we can just drop this minus 2x and it doesn't really change our calculation, and it, but it makes the math a thousand times easier. However, if the x is large enough to impact the concentration of our reactants, let's say it's within the significant digits of our starting concentration, generally that's going to be about 5% um, within 5% of the initial concentration, then we can't ignore it. We can't just drop it because it's too large and it's going to make an impact. Obviously it's x, so you don't really know what it is. So a lot of times it's a good idea to go back after you figure out what x is and double check, is it smaller than 5% or so uh, of the initial concentration. Let's go through one more example. This one's going to be a little bit more challenging. Go ahead and take a second to read the prompt. Start by writing a balanced equation and set up your ice table. I just like to do that all kind of all in the same spot. Uh, plug in what we know. So we're given three moles, but notice that it's in a one and a half liter flask. These are concentrations. Divide three divided by 1.5 to get two molar. It says that we're starting with just reactants, and so we'll assume that we have zero product. Now looking at the prompt, we don't have anything else other than the KEQ. Remember that the KEQ is the K at equilibrium. We don't have any concentrations at equilibrium. We can't use the K to figure anything out here, okay? So don't even try. We need to figure out how much this is changing, but we don't know that, so we have to use X. Obviously, we're going to create some product, and so our reactants are going to decrease. And we can just say by x, and products will increase by 2x because of the balanced equation. Now you can go ahead and add your columns down. So we get 2 minus x for both of our reactants and then 2x. Now, take a second to think about it. Our k is relatively large, which means that we're, we're creating a relatively large amount of products, right? When it reaches equilibrium, we have quite a bit of product. And so we're probably not going to be able to neglect x. So this is going to get a little bit heavy into the, into the algebra. Let's go ahead and set up our k and q. Now remember, uh, like I said a couple times now, this is the k at equilibrium. We have to use the equilibrium lines. Go ahead and set up your expression. It would look like this. And then plug in the values that we have at, at equilibrium. This is equal to our, our k and q that we're given. Uh, this is essentially 115, so I'm going to kind of write it more simply like this. Go ahead and simplify the polynomial. We can FOIL. and Simplifying this, uh, take both sides by the denominator, and then I went ahead and moved the 4x squared over to the other side uh, at all at the same time. Pause the video and work it out yourself so it makes sense where this is coming from. Now we have our equation in an ax squared plus bx plus c format. Uh, so we're going to have to go to the quadratic equation. If you have a calculator that can just kind of uh, run these for you, then that's uh, obviously very helpful. You end up with two answers for x. Now, this is where we have to employ a little bit of common sense. If we're starting with a concentration of 2 molar on our reactant, we obviously can't decrease it by 2.5 molar. So, so 2.46 doesn't make any sense. Our x has to be 1.69. You're always going to have one of your x's not make sense. So this must be our concentration at equilibrium for our reactants. And then plugging 1.69 in for x, this would be our concentration of our product. And then that would be it. That's about as challenging as it gets. It's not hard. It just requires a little bit of math and, and some space to kind of work out the problem. But once you get a little bit of practice with it, it's pretty straightforward. This is Mr. Euler signing out.